Ty a ty děti gru nepoštujeme. A potom mě na mor fílna. Nu e mir, nu e ki kryt e këfjallt, ku me di që farë andrë ke pa. Aso lumi a këtu eq, nësa të fëmi të uat me pështu. So, I'm Antoneta, I'm the director, writer and director. Um, we started, actually, I grew up in Kosovo. Uh, I was born there and we went through the war in uh, 1989. Uh, so the cinematographer of the Ish is my sister. So we grew up from a small village. And after the war, we started to get involved with this NGO that was doing a lot of social arts projects. And we met Casey, who is from California. He's my producer. He came like as a volunteer after the war to work with kids and arts and... Yeah, I mean, I, I met Antonetta and Sevdia um, just a few months after the war. And, and very soon after that, the three of us began uh, making documentary films together. And none of us had done that before. Um, and that began sort of our, our journey as filmmakers and as a film team and a, and a film company. We spent about 10 years together uh, in Kosovo making documentaries uh, and, and uh, current affairs television. And then Sevdia started first getting into narrative filmmaking, which led all of us here to Los Angeles to learn narrative filmmaking. We've been here for about 10 years. Yeah, we, we started in Kosovo right after the war because it was uh, the need to tell the story of what we experienced and filmmaking became the tool to do that. So that that's how we started. And I think like Kosovo, it's always part of um, our uh, stories and uh, things because it's, it's a big part of our growing. So going back there to make Zona was not something um, that was very unforeseen because that was something that uh, Neta has been working in the story for years now. We did a short back in 2011 that uh, that uh, also it's kind of the idea of the feature but then uh, uh, Antoneta and Casey really worked for this last five years like like four years before shooting the film on writing the script and developing the story so going back to shoot there was just something that just was very natural. Yeah, we, um, I was going back actually a lot. I was still doing documentaries. I, I live in LA, yeah, I came to study and I work here and then I go back. I'm still very much connected to Kosovo. I still have, uh, I was doing documentaries, going back there and Zana is, uh, during the war, we lost our mother and sister. And like Sevdiya said, that was the reason also why we got involved in film in the first place, because we really wanted to um, contribute to a conversation and not just be bystander, bystander anymore, you know? And yeah. that's why we were doing a lot of like social issue documentaries about gender, homophobia, and all other issues that we felt like we're missing in the media. And, um, and Zana, like I was doing documentaries and I still, it took me a very long time to actually find a way to deal with uh, my own personal story during the war. Uh, and it was harder somehow through documentaries because it was too personal and also I needed, I think, time to reflect and figure out what do I really want to tell about the war? What is it? What's the story I want to tell? Yeah, so, so Zana, I deal with uh, the specific um, like grieving of mothers who lost kids during the war because I lost my mom and sister, but I became a parent you know, later, and for me, that's my biggest fear. And I did a lot of interviews with women. So it's dealing with that and this sort of unarticulated trauma that women and mothers, and of course everybody, have it, but the women especially have just endured for centuries and it's not really in the public sphere. Like when we talk about war and uh, it's been always narrated by men, it's about statistics, numbers, and yes, you see it in the media, but there's not really, we haven't really yet and it's the same in Kosovo, you know, I mean, there's a lot of memorials and we talk about the war a lot, but it's on the surface. 
So I, I really wanted to tell that story. And it was interesting to see too how Zona, once we screened it there, even though it's dealing with, with the, the mother is like the main character, but then also we were able to see how also the village and how everybody else somehow is able to keep it under. So uh, everybody was able somehow to connect to their own traumas, you know, because war, especially war and I think any kind of trauma, but war especially so, it's really, um, it completely changes your view of the world and it's like there's an there's integration of complete society, you know, everything you know doesn't make yeah. sense anymore. It's not one person, it's like everything. And then how do you make sense of that? How do we, of course, the easiest is to like move on and we have to move on, you know, but uh, all these things do affect how we see society, how we function and how we're working to make things better or not, you know, so. And in Zona too, because she's more of a quiet, you know, character, you know, and passive in sort of what we view passive or active, you know, so it, uh, we really had to find a way visually, you know, to, to express that. And that's why the dreams were for us like a vehicle to like try to understand, you know, what, what she's going through. How do you prepare an actor for that type of process, especially you know, uh, I think your actor is also from Kosovo, right? All my actors are from locals from Kosovo. Adriana Matoshi, the lead actress, she is a renowned. She's she's very well known in Kosovo and abroad. You know, she's won awards and she's a great actress. And I there was actually like just if I can add something. There was another film that was two years ago that I shot and that she was part of it as well. That uh, played the the Seafast, the marriage. So. This is the second time that she, we have films playing there. So, so you guys are, you guys have that, that connection, right? Yeah, and the, the actress Adriana like is in a lot of films. And my sister has shot a lot of films in Kosovo, so features. But she, uh, she really has this piece and this um, just characteristic about her that it's so subtle, but also it's like a canvas that you can paint anything on. I don't know, she has this presence and, but she read the script and she really understood it very deeply and we just had really amazing conversations. And then at some point, you know, I did, I know she wanted to come. We went and visited my mother and sister's grave. She really wanted to know, because for a long time, I didn't really want to. I was trying to have a distance, like, of course, communicate with her, but not really bring my personal, like, in that way, you know, and uh, she wanted to go see it. And she had a daughter the same age. She was really able to feel mm -hmm. it, but also we had such a good communication. She, we were talking about it, how at some point, you know, during the shoot, I just had to look at her, you know, like, we didn't need to talk. After a few takes, you know, and we just look at each other and we had this yeah. connection, very good communication. I mean, some of these uh, some of these artists make you feel more vulnerable than you want to be, right? And that's that's the gift that they bring, you know. I, I I also you know one of the things that was mentioned was that you had family as extras, right? And that must have been cathartic. I'm I'm assuming that it was something that you shared an experience and maybe uh, they did inspire conversation about things that you had not had a conversation about. Or was it something that just happened and you kind of put away, you put it back into the, into the, you know, the basket and let it be, even though you've gone through that moment so far? Uh, like with my family, I mean, we don't really, I, we've lived with this mm. for so long. It's not something we pushed away mm. uh, with my family, but uh, definitely having my family in the film and then having the community because a lot of the extras were people who have lost people during the war and they came mm. all for free. It was something because it was bigger. It was something a lot of, it was more of a collective experience, you know? And I think for them to later see the film and it gives some, some more hope, you know, there's something bigger than just individually talking, you know, because of course yeah. with my family, we have this, you know, it's not like we're trying to hide it, you know, but it was very special. Everybody felt really kind of empowered and excited yeah. too, because, there's no movies. Uh, there are no movies that get shot there. So this Zona was one of the, maybe the first, I think second, that was actually dealing with a topic that was very, from that area and people were like very excited to help us. Yeah, I mean, the the beauty of, of filming Zana uh, in the region of Kosovo where we did is not 
just that it fits the story perfectly because it's where uh, Antoinette and Sebi grew up, but also because the community there is uh, so much a part of it. They, um, you know, they support it. They supported it fully because uh, it's, you know, uh, made by two sisters who grew up there. Um, we also, the three of us, were very active in the community there after the war, both with our films and our other activities. And so we've engendered a lot of goodwill there in the community. And, you know, knowing what it's like for us to make films here in Los Angeles, where, you know, there's a, a ton of talent and a ton of professionalism, but also it's, it's almost impossible to get one goat onto your film set in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. There's a hundred permits and, you know, five crew members that need to take care of one goat. But in, 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 in the Pay region of Kosovo, we were able to fill big scenes with, with hundreds of extras that were out there for free. We were able to, uh, people were donating and lending us, you know, all these farm animals and tractors and military vehicles and guns and the police forensic unit yeah, came out for, sure. at, for free to play yeah. the forensic team and they would close down the highway for a night. Uh, all, countless locations that were given for free. So there was just so much, um, so much input that makes our film feel way bigger than what we, how, how was it? How, did you have to turn some people away and have to be like really, really like careful about how you let them know? You know, we don't really need the chickens. It's okay. <laughs> no, no, we were we were constantly, <laughs> constantly asking and, and welcoming anyone <laughs> who had something to add because it just fills it out and it makes it feel more the way that life really is there, which is, um, you know bustling and and yeah. alive yeah, the challenge has always been in hollywood of on that on telling diverse stories right not just the people but also the stories that are from all over the world and they'll tell you well we can't afford it because we don't know how many people are actually going to buy tickets right and so i i i think that you know i guess my question to you and one of the last questions that i'll ask you guys is that how do you approach that because your your region and i will say this especially your town uh is so lucky to have you guys because you're going back there to tell their story and i'm sure that there's other towns that have other stories that are not they're similar but not the same and they have their own special unique elements that i think we need to hear especially right now as we change in the world right so i know that there's especially at, at seafest and i know our readers on landscape latino there's a lot of uh, independent producers who are, you know, trying to figure out how do I tell the story so that people understand that this is what we go through, so that there's more compassion, more empathy, all these elements that we need right now. So uh, I would love to hear from all three of you guys what your perspective would be on how would you approach that, especially in, a, in an environment that's going to be, as much as they're approaching and they're trying to make change, it's still going to be very challenging and you found something. Well, I, I guess I would start, you know, with, with the, you know, one of the first challenges of making a film like this or the films that you're talking about is that the financing here is so dependent on it being a commercial hit and that becomes a barrier to so many stories. We're, we're, we're just very fortunate that, Kosovo, like much of Europe and much of the world, has a nationalized film fund that, that supports independent films. And we were able to, uh, you know, get support from, from there and from Albania and from other grants that allow us to make this film uh, without, um, without investors who are looking at their watches waiting for the, the profits. And, and and that, you know, we're, we're facing that here in Los Angeles, too. It's very hard to tell a lot of stories when the industry says that's not commercial. So we, you know, we don't think we're going to make a lot of money from it. Um, I, I feel like, you know, I, I really wish that the United States and California had more um, nice. funding for independent film uh, that, that wasn't 
about um, commercial commercial you know returns. In the meantime, it's just it's just uh, it becomes an increasing challenge for everyone of us here um, how to make films as as cheaply as possible, which is painful because it, it's hard to uh, earn a living and to support yourself that way. But you know there are many filmmakers here who are making films for for next to nothing and it's it's incredibly creative and ingenious it's also just very hard because you've got to then have another job and do it you know in your free time that you, you know a lot of filmmakers just aren't getting paid for the brilliant work that they're doing here yeah yeah so in that sense uh, it's really good to have a go back there and have the opportunity to get grants you know we got also some post grants here Right. And we had like support from San Francisco Film Society and Light Iron and Panavision. But uh, yeah, it is much harder to start to do your first feature. Because once you have your first feature and you have a, hopefully it gets easier, you know, we'll see my, my plan now is to do a film here in Los Angeles. We'll see, we'll see how that goes in terms of funding. But I really wish to that everybody had access, you know, because I think especially with the first features in the beginning, there's no these uh, government grants, you know, where you're able to just send your script and then it's based on the quality of the project. It's not so much about whether you're known or you have connections or you have big actors, because that just gives opportunity for more voices. And that's what I feel like US really kind of misses, you know. But we have, I think, some movement, hopefully now more, you know, that they're starting to really hope that's gonna change for better. Yeah, I. I think that this is a very specific time here in uh, in US and around the world with everything that's happening and with the pan pandemic as well. And for Kosovo being like a young country, we kind of the film industry is developing. So we've been able to be part of the way that that industry is getting shaped and also be able to contribute on it. Also by like, uh, we've been here in LA for uh, 10 years now, over 10 years. I, uh, I feel very lucky to be able to get support also here from like companies like Panavision and Light Iron, because I was able to bring a whole package from Los Angeles to Kosovo to shoot. First time uh, Panavision package there, where it flew with the, with the camera and the lenses and everything there. So that there is some support and hopefully with what is happening now, we do see more support on diversity uh, that it, it will be given in Hollywood as well, because there is a lot of people here. And that is actually also the, the, the good part about being in Los Angeles is that there is so much diversity. It exists. We just, uh, we just have to be able to uh, tell our stories and get more support from, um, from, uh, actually yeah like uh, maybe like uh, los angeles uh, film uh, uh, commission can do something like in in europe also and start uh, supporting projects in general like uh, it would be great if california starts supporting more because there is so much filmmakers from around the world here that is very specific for being here so and i hope that in the future they will get more voices and films being made I'm assuming you're already proceeding with your next project, right? If not, right in the middle of it. Well, I'm, I'm working on uh, writing my second feature that will take place here in Los Angeles. And then we as a company to have yeah, some other projects. We, we, we've been developing uh, a, a slate of um, some, some feature films, as well as a couple of TV projects that we're developing and writing. And then the three of us just about two weeks ago shot uh, a short film, quarantine a, a film. quarantine <laughs> short film, where the, uh, the entire cast and crew was our family. So yeah. it was Sevdi and her husband were the full DP camera lighting grip department. Netta and I wrote and directed it and we acted in it with our two daughters. And uh, yeah, so it was a, a family project, only the sound, mixer was uh someone that you know what was a friend of. and uh yeah so we're we're finding ways to uh to continue working and developing and uh and creating even in this really challenging time where it's so hard to to put a, a, a big 
a big cast and crew together. I shot in Kosovo last year, that's in post-production, so that will be coming out sometime. And at the same time, just really looking for projects that tell meaningful and important stories. So we'll see. I just wanted to quickly just really say that I'm really honored to be part of Seafest and it's such a great festival and Vera does such an amazing job. Yeah, we're so happy like that, that there is a festival like this in LA, you know. We're, we're, we're so happy that it's uh, finding a way to happen this year, even in the midst of the pandemic. It's, yeah. it's really wonderful that it's that it's staying alive. And thank you, CFAS, for the great work. Thank you so much.